uh, you guys talk any offensive line stuff? Yeah, I was, I was a, no, we're about to right. I was going to ask you too. So, mm -hmm. um, looking at the offensive line, you know, Braxton Jones starting at left tackle, mm -hmm. Cody, uh, Sam Mustafer, uh, right mm -hmm. guard, Tevin Jenkins, Larry Barome at right tackle. Uh, what did you see from that unit? You know, I know that group as a whole didn't get a lot of snaps, but what did you see mm -hmm. from that group when they were out there? Well, I think the first thing you guys probably missed it, you guys probably talked about it, was you, you like the way Getsy, his approach, right? His boots, his tight end screens, his play action pass. He's trying to protect his line that he knows. I mean, they got they got to gel, and some guys got to take a step for them to be actually be a good offensive line. But as far as Tevin Jenkins at right guard, he struggled a little bit, right? I mean, that's the first time he's been there. You can see that uh, the, what they're seeing a guard and tackle is that the fight starts right now. He's got to get his hands out immediately his hands were a little high and that right foot you can see him kicking it straight back he's got to keep that thing more at a 45 degree angle to hold the integrity in the pocket right so now he's not he can't run the guy around the quarterback he's got to be he's got to be really stout right there to keep the guy at a quarterback space and you see them edging him on his right side there the whole night he's got to get used to that I'll be honest with you man I really think they should look at Larry Borum there at right guard if I'm them I flip it this game I put Borm at right guard. I put um, Tevin Jenkins back at right tackle and see what that looks like just to see what I got. Mm -hmm. As far as Braxton Jones, um, you know, you see Seattle Seahawks play their two rookie tackles the whole first half. I I'm shocked at how they're using him. I'm shocked that he gets that rest when it comes out. I knew he struggled a little bit on that Seattle Seahawks turf away from home against a different pass rush, a little bit of crowd noise. His footwork gets a little funky at times, but I guess, in short, when you watch their whole protection as a unit, Khalil Herbert missed the blitz pickup. The two tight ends got beat. O'Shaughnessy and Cole Komet got beat on a play-action pass. J-Mac, as you know, Alex, as you know, because you, you, you eat tight ends alive. Uh, protection is a team. It's more than just the offensive line, right? The running backs mm -hmm. involved. The tight ends are involved. The quarterbacks involved in making the calls and knowing who has the mismatches and who is the point. So this unit... For if you ask me what I saw, they need a lot of work to come together in the gel and to get a little better. But I do like what Getsy is doing with his scheme to help them move the ball down the field. OG, um, watching that game, what I saw, mm -hmm. um, just from my perspective, and I'm I'm looking at when we could run the ball down people's throat and the mm -hmm. the the unity I, I saw with you guys watching that game last night. Running back gets tackled eight yards down the field. There's three offensive linemen down there pushing the pile, helping him up. Like, mm -hmm. it's just little things like that. I always saw at least two linemen down the field. And when I was on the other side now, I hated it. I hated it when, mm -hmm. when y'all offensive linemen would come in and hit the pile. I hated it. Mm -hmm. But now when I watch it, I can see the unity and these guys are doing it. Like, I, mm -hmm. hey, you know what? I like that. I, I think Brother O would be, he'd be proud of them guys for that, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah, they they play with a little bit of edge. Tevin Jenkins has that in him, right, where he mm -hmm. finishes plays. Uh, like you said, that offensive line, you can tell they're in that building, the coaches are preaching it. They're trying to change the culture on offense mm -hmm. and defense, right? But yep. uh, like you know, Alex, uh, that that only goes so far, right, the effort Agreed. stuff. So we got to mm -hmm. get guys who are playing at an elite or right below a Pro Bowl level out there because – when we play San Francisco and Green Bay in weeks one and two, those defensive line units are stout. Uh, they will come after you. We're talking about Bosa. We're talking about mm -hmm. Armstead. We're talking about Kenny Clark. We're talking about Sean Gary. We're talking about Preston Smith. Okay, mm -hmm. so all the hustling is great. I got to yeah. get guys to get the damn hands inside, and I got to get guys to get guys to move off the ball. Yeah. Winning, winning games like that with, with defenses like that, you got to stay in what I saw. I saw quite a bit of last mm -hmm. night and that's mm -hmm. third and short third and medium mm -hmm. you can't get into third and longs then you're mm -hmm. in trouble when you're playing defenses like that because that is their bread and butter that's when they gonna they let their ears back and they're they're humming they're coming to you so um mm -hmm. we got to be able to run the football uh in that aspect then we don't have to match up and try to block five on four and that's just a tall task for um for our offensive line right now yeah brother it yeah, was I don't know. Good to see. Mm -hmm. i'm sorry brother it was, it was good to see no go ahead the play calling because we actually talked about it last week in terms of you know Getsy running those play actions running those boot actions off of that outside zone you look at the one he did with Khalil Herbert you know he he ran that outside zone and, and Justin Fields did a good job faking it he booted around and hit Cole Komet on the over route 
and it's good just to see, you know, with Cole Komet, it's, it's getting him involved early, uh, you know, mm-hmm. playing to his skill set. You know, I don't know if he, he, he won't, I don't think he'll, you know, I don't know. He can be, maybe he can be a Travis Kelsey, but I don't envision that for him. He's not a guy that you can just split out wide and, and he can create on his own. You know, he's a guy you got to scheme him up and do things to get him the ball. So it was good mm-hmm. to see that in terms of play calling. Um, I know, brother, you tweeted out in terms of tight end screen. We finally got mm. one. Just, <laughs> just play action, early. tight end screen. First play of the game. Let's yeah, go. love it. Yeah, get your quarterback, you know, get Justin Fields. play off. Up, you know, give him some nice high percentage throws and, you know, just makes it a lot easier on the offense as a whole. Um, The one thing yeah, we'll like- talk about, I'll talk about in terms of protection, brother, you talked about it with the O-line. I got to see more from Khalil Herbert in terms of pass protection. You look at, mm-hmm. I think it's uh, the second pass of the game. You know, he sticks his nose in there, the linebacker's coming, but he ducks his head and he gets beat. Fields is forced to throw that ball. You know, he feels barely got that ball away. But if, if Herbert's going to carve out a niche as being the number two back in, in terms of where he may have to come in on third down, he's got to be a back that's willing and able to pass protect. You know, we talked about last week on the podcast, we want to see them really sell the boot. And I thought they did. I, I thought they cleaned up some of their – um some of the little, like, you know, their their head coming up, showing the defense mm-hmm. that it was a pass instead of a run. So you like to see that. You like to see them buying in a little bit more to what they're trying to do. I tell you. 